The 12 week year by Brian Moran and Michael Lennington. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel and I want to make self growth normal. If you want to make self growth normal, because I don't want to do it alone, then make sure to smash that like button. All right, guys, I was worried that I would tear this book apart in five minutes listening for the first time to this book, I had heard virtually nothing for the first time. The author does say a lot of this we already know, but we're not really applying. With books that have that sort of gist, I typically find them to be a unique, like, amalgamation, I think that's a good word, of already known knowledge with a unique name. Other books don't specifically teach you to how to achieve four times more than you already are achieving. The whole time, as much as I hate to say it, I'm gonna drop this bomb, I was thinking of Brian Tracy instead of Brian Moran and Michael Lennington. In this book, it's shown how to substantially increase your results, reduce stress, build confidence, and feel better about yourself. Increasing your results, reducing stress, increasing your confidence, and feeling better about yourself. How many times have we heard words like this in the beginning of a book? Is this just a boring rehash of other content? I forgot to turn my, uh, my, my ring light all the way up here. Hmm. Was it ghostwritten? Was it ghostwritten by Brian Tracy? <laughs> I'm just kidding, I mean. Brian Tracy probably has talked about multiplying your results by two to four more than any other author whose work I've even heard of. But is this book actually good? Does it really teach what it says it will? Four times is it's quite the promise, you know what I mean? In this review, we're gonna talk about that, some other thoughts I had on the book, what the top positive and negative helpful Audible reviews had to say about it, some standout quotes, and who I recommend the book to, as well as what books maybe to check out next. There are two halves of the book, sort of. One is things you think you know, and the next one is putting it all together. Things you think you know challenges what you think is required of you to be great at what you do. And it's not like I disagreed with these guys. I learned right off the bat that thinking annually is dangerous in terms of it'll happen this year instead of this month or this week or today or within the hour or within, within this next minute. I agree and disagree with this based on my experience with this year. I'm trying to become a YouTube partner by 2021 and a whole video or two could be made about my experience with annualized thinking in regards to this. When they said to start treating a year like 12 weeks, I was like, this is genius, but some of this I've heard in a lot of places, like the biggest percentage of those places directly had to do with Brian Tracy. With throwing out the annual plan, he explains why 12 week plans are so much more predictable and focused. I couldn't tell whether this was just a bunch of content repackaged in a way that's like highly intended to introduce this idea of a 12 week year where you get four times more done or it was like meant to be a bunch of information that no one's ever heard before. I think it's the former, but does the information have to be this well known? The guy who narrates the audiobook even kind of sounds like Brian Tracy. There were some things I hadn't heard of before like productive, productive tension. Oh my gosh, have I experienced this? That uncomfortable feeling that you get when in the moment you know you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. I mean, time is the most squandered of valuable resources, personal resources. The reality is if you're not intentional with how you use your time, you leave your results to chance. A really good way to use your time in the middle of a video is just taking one second to just gently tap that like button. As soon as it turns blue, then all your dreams come true and another person uh, gets their job back in today's economy. In the part called intentionality where he talks about different types of time blocks, my mind was blown just listening to the names of them. Strategic blocks, breakout blocks, and buffer blocks. The thing with me and time management is we have a pretty, we have a, we have a long, we go way back, right? Like I've mastered time management more than just about anything else in personal development. It all started with this 55 minute long seminar, which is free on YouTube, by the way, with Brian Tracy. I stumbled upon it once when I was writing a song about like the relationship between time and money. But after I saw it, I was like so blown away. I started watching it every single Sunday and then planning my, while I planned my week out. I did this for 18 months straight. Now my time is so rigidly compartmentalized that on my very best week, 25% of my time, exactly 25% is spent at work, 25 is spent on reviews, 25 is spent sleeping, and 25% is spent on my girlfriend and my family. And it's been like this since I started working at the dealership in February. He explains what it really means to be in the zone, as well as being intentional about 
imbalance in your life. I've done this all year. There are some things you might just need to put to the side for a year or two. I don't know if this is true, but I think I'm gaining weight. And like, if it is, I know for a fact that I can lose it. Health and weight loss and dietary stuff, like that is like the only thing that I really haven't studied in self-help. Next year, you guys might see quite a few diet and health books you know, on my channel, The Reviews. Here we move on to putting it all together. You learn about the five stages we go through when we decide to make change in our lives. Uninformed optimism, informed pessimism, the valley of despair. This is where most people, as you pr could probably imagine, give up. Informed optimism and success and fulfillment. Most people have all of these at some point, but as you can tell, I kind of have just like mixed feelings about this book. There's not that much to say on it for me because there's really not all that much that's new. With books, I like thinking in terms of what can I get from this book? The application of it will, will make me a hundred times more money than I paid for it. There are books I've paid $10 for and applied the tactics and made thousands of dollars in return. A book of which written by Grant Cardone and Napoleon Hill, but that's beside the point. If you already have your own system of daily, weekly, and monthly habits, the necessity for certain things here as long as it works for you it might not really be there, it might not be necessary for you to try all of this different stuff. Like the weekly accountability meeting or the WHAM! As the author puts it. The keeping score chapter, I did, I had to hear that, you know, like where he talks about something in the, earlier in the book, I don't know, to me it sounded kind of boring, but the more you heard about it, the more it kind of caught my attention. Called lead indicators versus lag indicators. I don't know, maybe there's just something about the word indicator that just sounds like, it just sounds like, oh, the indicator is going to be the, the lead and the lag, and I don't know, I, don't, I have no idea what I'm saying. It is, what, what is it, six something in the morning and I don't even know, I, got, I don't know if I got six hours of sleep. It's funny because I just reviewed The Sleep Revolution by Ariana Huffington. But he does remind us that it's more important to focus on action than how many actions you're currently at. Something else I liked about the book is the different stories that the, the authors tell of their clients. There were some of them that were actually a little bit relatable. Something I also liked about it is that when they talk about their clients, they'll do it in a way that addresses concerns you might have about different ideas in the book. And I also like what he says about team application for each little section, as well as the, the thinking shift. Overall, this is a very useful piece of work. It's packed with solid advice. Some of it is like noticeably repackaged. Maybe not painfully repackaged, but very noticeably. The narration in this audiobook, this dude sounded just a little too stern. And I think his performance could have used a lot more enthusiasm and energy. There was something big that flew over my head listening to it though, which the top negative helpful review seemed to catch, which we'll get to in just a second. The top helpful positive review written by Andrew and Allison was basically solely, literally just a bunch of different notes from the book, which I have never seen before. I guess I could see why or how it's helpful, but not really how it's a review. <laughs> The top negative review, helpful review, written by Steven, recommends the book for anyone just starting out. He says it's filled with anecdotes as opposed to an actual process. I didn't even consider this until reading this review. It actually does have way more anecdotal information, ideas, and examples of ideas than needed. The authors do talk about weekly meetings and uh, establishing a vision, but if you've checked out any book from the last, in productivity from the last, like, 20 years or so, you know that there's nothing new here. I agree, Steven. Hashtag preach. They just don't talk about how to use a system enough. Quotes. You can't build a reputation on what you're going to do. All my life I wanted to be someone. Now I see that I should have been more specific. You can hold a baby and you can hold groceries, but you can't hold someone accountable. Measurement is not accountability. It is simply feedback. John D. Rockefeller said this next one. I don't think there is any quality so essential to success as perseverance. It overcomes almost everything, even nature. Direction one. I also recommend this book for anyone who is just starting out. There really isn't enough of like a concrete outline that's that's laid 
laid out in this book. I don't know if they were trying to use the book as a sales pitch to, to use their services. If they did, they did a poor job for too many reasons to list, which is sad because a lot of examples of goal realization in the book are written by like salespeople. The advice is not wrong, again, but it has been talked about so, so, so many times. And the idea is unique, but it's also been presented in so, so, so many different ways. I don't know, direction two, whether you like this book or not, Deep Work by Cal Newport, despite what I have to say about that guy's sort of extremist views on like social media usage and stuff like that, it is a great book for productivity. Maximum Achievement by Brian Tracy, or a lot of things by Brian Tracy, honestly, are great for productivity and achievement. But let me tell you, in terms of substance, this book is, is, is leagues behind those. The 12 Week Year by Brian Moran and Michael Lennington. There's a link in the description if you guys wanna check it out and read the reviews. That and all the other books that I mentioned in this video, if you wanna check those out too. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below. Please, please, please. Also let me know if you uh, checked out this book and you liked it, but hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, because I don't get why people watch this far into my videos and they don't subscribe, but if you have subscribed and you wanna turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to get a notification every time I drop a new video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.